Hey everyone, uh, this is the Chatty Curator, and today we've got a familiar face coming back. Uh, Monica, hi, how are you? Hi, Alpha, so excited to be back. And this time we're doing something a little bit different. We are just going to have morning tea or afternoon tea, just spill the tea. We're both um, Asian Australian, and then we're both connected to many um, Asian people living in Australia. Sometimes that the identity of someone's uh, passport or visa status do make people feel like, oh, should I call myself Asian Australian? To me, they all are. They all are. However, but let's just say for this particular series that we're going to do this video or future videos, we just say like, you know, Asian Australian and Asian in Australia. For me, I feel that many people in terms of like, as in content uh, creator, I'm a content creator, you're a content creator as well. But then we also have something else in our lives that mm. help us. Like for example, professionally, you're an academic, I am professionally a marketer. So all of these different things, podcasts, Instagram or, 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 or Facebook or whatever, it is, us showcasing like kind of like a teaser of what we can do I don't want mm. to see it as my main thing mm. like how do you That's feel right. about that uh, first of all like what you say people need to understand the intention of those who actually create content on social media or, or for internet right there are just so many platforms you can do uh, these sort of things so the intention should then drive their incentives and the return that they want to get out of it. Like for us, we are not trying to monetizing the content that we are creating. We are trying to reach out and then to our community and to actually try to learn from each other, to improve the things that we do, um, which and could be linked to... Yeah, that's right. To 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 also improve our professional life, um, yes. but it may not necessarily directly link to our professional career. So that part, when when Apple is doing this monetizing, um, podcast. the the yeah, yeah podcast, uh, we would feel a bit like, uh, is it necessary? Is it important? Is it how would it affect our community, right? Mm. Do people who want to connect with us now have to pay to listen to us? And they might think, well, why do I want to pay to listen to some unprofessional, like you know, just general discussion, like my son popping behind my yep. back? I, I love him, it, I love it, love it. <laughs> That's a cameo, so that's, that's a photo that's, bombing. Yeah, <laughs> but then some of my students who actually major in digital marketing, they want to make a living out of creating content. It is their professional life, right? So in that case, they really want to tap into a platform like Apple who can help them build their business. And so uh, this is where I'm sitting. I'm thinking we need to understand why people create content and how they want to use it what kind of return they want to get out of it. It is quite different for, for everyone. So, you know, I'm an academic, you know that. I always sit on the fence. When you ask me things, I'm so sorry. No, after no, no, that's that's good. That's good. Look, I mean, I think this is the part that we want to facilitate the conversation. It's not like we're trying to polarize anyone. So it is important for us to really just like if you are on the fence, then you know just like what you did, like the the, mm. the different side of the the coin that we look at it, and and on that note, I'll share my point of view as well. Like you know, um, well, I'll give you an, an a, a TV show I, uh, idea that will be uh, very easy for the audience to, uh, sorry, that will be very easy for everyone to understand. Uh, is RuPaul Drag Race? So, <laughs> like if you look at any se earlier season, any anything from up to say season eight or season six sometimes is that like you know all of those queens like um they, they have a lot of talent they might be talented musician they might be talented dancer actor or comedian but then their instagram 
is the additional part. The podcast is an additional part of what they do. Now, in the more recent series of RuPaul Drag Race, like they're up to 13 now. Can you believe it? Wow. They've been around for that many years. But anyway, the many of these uh, new queens appearing on the show in like se season after 10 on onward, that many of them just really look having great Instagram um, look. But when they are performing, it's just... Like they can't do comedy, they can't dance, they can't sing. They look good on picture, but there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, so look, I mean, in a way, in a way, I'm glad that they have the Australian version uh, premiering uh, this month, actually today. Uh, so I'm going to watch it. But from my understanding, I've actually seen some of those queens before. Some of them are actually very talented Australian uh, dancer, performers and everything. So I think it's a bit of a, hopefully it's a return form. But uh, the whole reason I'm raising this is because uh, for me, I would not see myself to solely making money by creating content. I want it to come from what I do. But I think if someone asked me my opinion, uh, if someone being like a career content uh, creator or curator that is only working on that thing, that's fine. That's fine. Mm. But just make sure that you always have another skill to fall back on or base your content with. Um, that's so, right. I mean, yeah, because the thing is, look, I mean, let's just put Instagram as an example again. Like, you know, we can't look great forever. We, we all mm. got to look a little bit different 10 years from now. Just so <laughs> thinking about if you're being looking fantastic <laughs> on Instagram today, uh, do you think you can have a whole career up to when you're 65 years old on Instagram and you will still get millions of followers? Please. Please. Yeah. And also we need to assess, you know, like, like exactly like what you say, Apple wants to uh, provide a platform where people can monetize it, monetize a uh, podcast yeah. and that's fine, but people need to know, and I'm sure those professional uh, content creators, they know they can't just rely on one platform. Mm. They actually connect, like if they do, podcast on Apple, they also do something shorter, much shorter version on Instagram or even TikTok to, to, yeah. to tease, you know, these are the teasers which are free, you don't have to pay, but then it's up to the um, consumers to decide like, oh, do I want to see more? Um, do I want to go to Apple and pay? So there are options and, and you know, mm. my background is uh, also include economics. I also believe in free market forces. People have choices, they make their decisions and they will tell, you know, which will be uh, successful. And like what you just say, some people are super, super great in creating very short content. Oh yes. And then when you ask them to elaborate, there's no story. It's just like, uh, five seconds, yeah. boom, and, and that's it, finish. I, I don't have any more than that. So you have to really choose something that is great for your talent. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, um, I, I would say that if anyone wants to be a career content curate, content person, or someone that really just focusing on the platform, uh, like, you know, always think about ways that you can develop new skills develop yeah. new skills that you can fall back on so because like you know so many people that um maybe like ourselves that we base what we put online on our professional experience and background uh but mm. luckily because we are older older not old okay <laughs> uh but then <laughs> i'm not old i'm experienced <laughs> me too well there you go yes exactly See, what do you think I'm using all these filters for? I mean, it's a little bit like, look, I mean, I, I admit I'm bang. I like, like, you know, I like the way uh, that I look. I like the certain way that I want to present myself. Like, you know, I would, I, I, I do buy, slightly buy into the youth culture that I, I've been spending a lot of money on creams and things like that. So, I mean, yeah. I admit, I admit I'm part of it, but I also diversify my skills as a marketer. So, I mean, in some ways, like, you know, develop your skills, even if you, if you develop skills in like, you know, editing videos or putting special effects together, 
that may actually become a career after that, you know, well, look, I mean, beauty fade, like, you know, all mm, of those yeah. things, like, you know, and, and people can get exhausted by just keep churning out podcasts month after mm. month after yeah. month. I mean, you know, I know this is only our first episode, but then you never know. I mean, maybe, maybe two weeks later, we'll be sick of each other. But then, or it will go for like two decades. Then, then you see me looking more and more like a sci-fi character. It's, nah, it's nah, like, nah, nah. I, I don't believe that because that's the, you know, we can always touch up our appearance with technology. Well, yeah, because that that would that would look like that would look like. Well, I mean, then we can put it in uh put into the 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 the, the special effects category. <laughs> yeah, but back to the topic, like monetizing podcasts, that really is it's not just a a topic about you know whether we should or we should not. It is actually about the offerings, mm. the people who actually create these podcast you need to assess whether you're providing any value to people who are willing to pay and how much they are willing to pay so i know there's a debate of rule whether you know apple should do this well apple provide a platform now it is for the market to decide if this will will of course we have seen like spotify and other competitors they have been doing it well but again people will have to think do I want to go Spotify? Do I want to go somewhere else? You know, and the Chinese market, they also have their own, I think it's called Himalayas uh, FM or something. You know, this they even have uh, professors wow, okay. who actually chop up their yeah. lectures and you can pay by lectures. You can listen to the podcast of those lectures, famous professors. Oh. So that is what uh, the market is now deciding even in terms of the learning space, do you want to get a degree or you want to go and listen to some specific topics by a famous professors? Because sometimes you, you don't have the money to just pay for a degree. You don't have the time to actually study like, you know, two subjects a semester, but you need spe specialist knowledge at certain time of your career. And then so you go for those specific topics. So again, I, I always go back to, it is not whether the business provider should do something. It is whether the market wants it that way and they're willing to pay or not willing to pay. And so the suppliers of this podcast should then decide, can they read the market smartly to actually mm. you know, tap into all these resources that the platform actually provides? That's a very interesting point. I haven't thought about that at all. But then, you know, I mean, it's true because once you got into that, that space um, from a consumer point of view, then mm -hmm. this may be like, you know, if I only have in, enough money to put in some learning, then do I go for a learning podcast or do mm -hmm. it on Apple? Or do I go into things like Skillshare's LinkedIn Learning or enroll a course, enroll an online course from a, from a university? or a short course or something like that. And that once you enter that space, like, you know, as the content curator, you need to be aware that you're kind of entering a different space. So like, you know, yep. even though if someone may be sharing a podcast about fictions or something like that, uh, or, or writing or something like that, they might be entering the same space as audiobook. Like that, that's interesting. And then for us as consumers, it's a little bit like, do I want to pay for that? I mean, <laughs> it's a little bit like, do I want to pay for that? I mean, and then... <laughs> Or, or like, you know, for example, I have, I have membership for audio books. So it's a little, I don't even have enough, enough time to go through all of them. Let alone <laughs> pay, right. for, pay for a podcast. It's a little bit like, come on. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point. I, I like Yeah. That. And then there's like multiple platforms now, right? Like we have a Netflix account. I also have an Apple TV account TV, yeah. and then an Amazon Prime account. And last night we were yeah. watching a movie on net netflix and it was hanging i'm like eh. my son was like oh what's going on we have to wait and wait and then i told them you know actually we have an amazon prime account we can also watch movie they go oh really but you know you just have to platform hopping 
it's very tiring. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the difference of that to switching channels in the past? Yeah, but then you have to connect to different accounts. Oh, yeah, that's true. Actually, it's not like you <laughs> press a button on a remote. You no. kind of go re-enter the detail and lock out, re-enter the detail, lock out, re-enter the detail. And then you go into that. Turns out your show that you're watching had expired. Then yeah. Then you'll be like, fuck, fuck this shit. <laughs> Like, and then if you have a family that is a young kid and you want to lock the control and it is not always so easy to just click a button, you have to like uh, turn away, don't look when I'm entering the password. Oh my God, it is really not that easy if you have a family that shares the platforms, you know? Oh my God, yeah. Uh, that, that actually is a very good... That's another really good point that I, I wouldn't have, I, I don't have such experience of, wow, oh gosh. I mean, I just, it, it's, it's exhausting. I mean, there's like, you know, there's Netflix, Stan, Disney Plus, um, Amazon Prime, Stan, did I say Stan already? And then all of these platforms, it's a little bit like, it, it's kind of funny because when, when they, when one of them first came out, it felt like they were the industry disruptor from TV, which is switching channel on, on the remote. Mm. But then these days, it looks like they became them. <laughs> hey, you never know. Maybe, the, well, look, I mean, on a positive note, maybe the paid podcast platform that uh, Apple put out there may become a new disruptor of that space. But, mm. but of course, like, you know, for us as consumers or small small con smaller content cre uh, creators let's just look at it from what we can use what we can use what is existing to get our message out there and yeah, yeah. now i'll need I you think to come the up pos with positive points is it's good there's another yeah. platform you know improve yeah. competition um but the takeaway for the the users the creators and the platform itself will have to be driven by market forces. It is. And, mm. and look, market force is, is not a fair place, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's not a place that uh, it's, it's um, yeah. So I think um, as long as people are making educated decisions, that's fine. If they want to do whichever way that they want, that's fine. Um, Okay, well, to close out the video, at this point in time, for like, you know, May 2021, um, would you pay for a podcast? I, I would pay for a podcast if it helps me manage more efficiently. Um, mm. I, not only I have to go and look for content, like, you know, what actually interests me, I should just pop up and go, yeah, Monica, this is something you like. You go, oh, wow, that's good. Um, and not just based on, I know this, these days there are a lot of AI technology that actually track what I have watched before. They know what I'm interested in, that's easy. But if you can also track and predict what else I would like and how it can improve my life, that would be really good, right? If you stand smart, I'm happy to pay for it. And also, it depends on who actually get on that platform and what is the value that I get out of it. But do I have time? That's the other thing. Do I have time? I pay for so many subscriptions that I actually don't fully utilize. I, I, I think I, I agree on that point. I think... Um, I, I have subscription to Audible for audiobook. I, I still haven't finished all of them. I actually have to put my membership on hold because, you know, I mean, oh. every month I got one, one credit for the, 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 the money that I paid for it, which is great. I like it. But then the other side of it is like, if I can't finish it, like, you know, like, mm. it's like going to a buffet that you can't finish all of the food. <laughs> like paying for gym membership. Arthur, how much have we paid for gym membership? <laughs> well, actually, this is interesting. I haven't been paying for membership since I moved uh, to Melbourne. However, since university until 2018, I was paying for a gym membership each month, 
but I think averagely I go to the gym like two or three times a year. So <gasps> I've been, I've been, I just kind of like, it was actually scary thoughts because tough to think about it. If I haven't had those gym membership, I might be halfway through a deposit for an apartment. <laughs> but then, I mean, but the only thing that I achieved out of that is that I became the gym's favorite, one of the favorite customers because I pay for the membership and don't show up. So of course, if I'm a gym operator, thanks Arthur. I mean, but then in, in my point of view, I was like, oh shit, come to think about it. Uh, yeah, so that's why it was so funny that this person I was going out with, he, he works in the gym and then he, he's almost, I think he has a bit of a sales role in it, but then almost like, saying that, oh, this is important, it will change your life or something like that. I think it's just like professional spasm, I call it, professional spasm. <laughs> like basically just keep talking what you talk. And then I was like, honey, I work in marketing. I can see a sales pitch from a mile away. <laughs> so no, no, don't, don't try me on that one. Seriously. <laughs> oh gosh, but oh my God, anyway. So it's been such a joy, Monica. It's just so fantastic. I think we got a really good start, good first episode. And Arthur, how can they actually uh, get in touch with us if they have any comments? Do they put it down yes. on yep. below this video? It, there's yeah. comments. Yep. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, feel free to comment underneath. But of course, that if you find our video on the platform on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, uh, or even on my website, chattycurator.com, feel free to put a comment in just within the profile, just underneath the video. And of course, feel free to tag a friend. Uh, mm -hmm. Just let them know that this, po this podcast exists, this series exists. And yeah, and actually, so Monica, you work with a lot of students and, and you have your own professional stuff. How can people find you if they want to reach out and, you know, yeah, they, they find me everywhere. They found me on LinkedIn. They found me on Facebook. Although I don't connect with people like students on my Facebook, it is my private oh, not a space. Not a <laughs> <laughs> but they still find me there. They found me on Instagram. I also have a TikTok. I can't manage too many, so I don't have a Twitter account. But somehow they found me. At the end of each episode, I just want to quickly share with everyone that is, it will be great for us, for you as an audience, to take something away. You learn a little bit something, even if you learn one sentence, one word, or one little piece of information, or start a discussion with people around you, uh, regardless of who they are, wherever they are, uh, I think that will be a fantastic opportunity for all of us. So, um, yeah, so, and of course, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out our other videos. And of course, check out my interview with Monica earlier this year. Thank you so much for your time this time and uh, hope to see you in our next video. Cut. See you. Have a good oh, couple. This is great. <laughs>